All right, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get back into this video, uh, the second part of my uh, playthrough. You normally want to normally want to try and get on the flank, like I said. These guys are in green. That's interesting. What the rifle? In the old British days, uh, green-coated men were sharpshooters, and indeed, the second United States sharpshooters. Looks like they're doing very well. They probably have rifles, so they probably have longer range. I don't really have a whole lot of room to maneuver at this point. Um, I've got this one regiment on the end of the line, but I'm not being very aggressive here. I should probably change that, but I don't have any room to maneuver on the left. I could maneuver on the right, but I really don't want to go through those woods. Maybe I'm just lazy. This unit's out in the middle of the open. They're doing decent, looks like, but if they do fall back, I've got a seasoned regiment reserve. Doesn't look like I'm going to accomplish my objective, though, because the Confederates look like they're holding pretty fast. And I do need to get you to get any points. You have to get 3,000 points to win this scenario. We're pretty well into this. Um, and, uh, and I haven't done that. I haven't done anything with it yet, really. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, at this point, it's kind of, uh, I mean, you, there's more I can do, obviously. I'm, I don't want to exhaust my men. Okay, I'm going to go over some other controls while we wait here. Um, first of all, the basic controls. Um, one of the most important controls is called Take Command. It's under the Combat tab. Um, it's actually under every tab. Um, there's For orders, there's the Combat tab, the Move tab, and the Orders tab. Um, and Take Command, what it does is you take total control. So you see the AI is maneuvering this unit back and forth. Um, a little bit. If I hit take command, they would not budge without my orders. They would open fire but on an enemy if it was in range, but they would not budge as far as um, moving left to right. Um, that's the most important order. Now there are other orders from a brigade level. Um, I can put my entire brigade into double line, which is what I did originally, which basically means half the unit is up front, half the unit's in a line behind it. So there were two regiments up front, two behind it. That's good if you're kind of doing a frontal mass assault or a flanking assault, but you don't want to get too wide, maybe in constricted territory, kind of like what I was using. Then there's column, which is what you want to use when you're marching, so it'll make it a lot faster. It's really vulnerable, so I can't just switch these guys into column and try and march around the enemy flank because they'll get ravaged because it's a thin, long line. You don't return fire, really. Um, then there's the standard battle line. That's just a long line of troops. Um, and then there's line with reserves, which basically puts my probably would put maybe three lines up front and one in the back, um, or it might have been two and two again. Usually if you have like five regiments, it would put three in the front and two on each flank. Then there's a, a column by divisions, which is just like a, an individual line, so your entire regiment's kind of massed in like a battle line. Um, and then column of regiments in line, which is sort of the same thing. There's also a skirmish option, which if I did that, I'd have the three three of my four regiments would be in back, and then I'd have one kind of scattered um, in the front in a very loose formation, not good to, you know, if the enemy attacks it, it'll fall back really easily, but it takes a little bit fewer casualties, and it spreads out and covers a wide range of territory, so I could basically screen my movements. I could put one regiment up front, which the enemy would see, but it would basically shield the regiments in back so they could move, maneuver more freely. It's also good for holding a wider range of territory when you're not expecting a massed assault, but you don't want the enemy to know you don't have any men there. So it's useful in screening. It's maybe not as much in this game as far as I've noticed, but from a historical perspective, very useful. Um, then there's the double click for my leader, so it'll make me gallop, run quickly to a place. Um, obviously a halt button, and they go to the selected unit button. So there we go. I'm selected on it, it goes right down to the battlefield level. Um, as you see, the, there's a decent amount of smoke. Um, there's some artillery shells that are exploding. And a lot of people don't know at this time and age, there were uh, fuses in the artillery. So when you shot it, um, it would have like a second, uh, a fuse that you would determine by how long um, the shot was going to be in the air. And it would explode and, and spray shrapnel all over your enemy. And that was the most effective way. The Union tended to have much more reliable fuses than the Confederates, naturally, because their industry was a lot better than the Confederates. Um, so the Confederate fuses tended to be a little bit unreliable, um, which often led the Confederates to seemingly always overshoot their opponents. Um, 
because a lot of times the fuses wouldn't detonate when they should. Now, um, I'm not really doing a whole lot here. I'm just kind of sitting and letting my troops shoot. Um, and there's no enemies refused there. There's no way to really turn at this point. Um, as it stands, um, let's go to the other order. So there's combat, which these are the three different order types. I went over the formations. We're going to go over order types now for regiments. Um, in the combat orders, you can order a unit to wheel left or wheel right, which basically just means they'll slowly, you know, slowly adjust where they are. You have a left flank, which I believe puts your unit at a 90 degree. I'm not going to do that with that. This unit. Let's try this. Um, left flank basically causes your unit to shift to the left, move over to the left. Um, reverse that. Um, basically, if the enemy is uh, flanking you, it's a way of shifting your unit while keeping the battle line. So you can extend um, and prevent your, the enemy from getting around to you. There's halt, obviously, double quick, which is basically where your unit will run. Be wary, you don't use that too much um, because your unit will get tired quick. Oblique left or right is basically like the flank button except that um, you also move forward. So it's a way of kind of disguising where your men are going to go um, and still present a line of battle while you maneuver into position. Okay, um, then there is a lie down, which you can use if you want your men to kind of hide. Um, useful for resting, useful for hiding behind a hill if you don't want the enemy to know you're there. Rise up. Um, so you can fight about face, which turns your entire force around. I don't really... I'm only doing it with this unit because it's not really in the front line of battle right now. Um, but yeah, so the about face, basically, as you see, shifts the entire unit to the other direction. But yeah. Um, then there's the general orders. These are not as useful for, for a brigade, but they are a lot more useful when you're commanding larger units. So if you're in command of a division, which commands several of these brigades, you can send a courier off to your units to tell them to charge, advance, fall back, retreat. Um, and that kind of gives your unit a general um, order um, and, you know, gives them an idea of what to do, lets the AI determine it. Then there's the movement orders, which wheel right, wheel left means the same thing. You can choose, tell your units to use road. So they'll stick to the roads um, when they can. Um, and then there's the lie up, lie down, still in the halt. And then there's the general orders, which are as very limited from a brigade standpoint. But when you command a unit to a larger force, then you'll be using this a lot more. Uh, you can select. So if I wanted this regiment, there are supply wagons that carry extra ammunition and artillery around. Um, let's see if there are any. Yep, see one right here. Carries extra ammunition around. So. If I wanted to, I could select a unit. This unit may do, be doing that, the sharpshooters unit. I can select a unit to guard something like that or artillery, and they will basically stick by that unit and guard them as best they can. Looks like the enemy's fallen back, so I'm going to go ahead and advance my men. At least on the left here. Well, these men are going to shortly be blocked by the men moving in front of them. Um, so here, I'm going to use this command, actually. I'm going to use it. I'm going to tell him to uh, oblique left. So that... I'm not really oblique. Okay, a little bit. And then these guys are going to oblique. Oh, shoot. I'm still... Still attached to this unit. So there we go. They're advancing quickly. I should charge him. That won't be necessary. I don't really... Yeah, this is what this order's for. Get him to move to the left. Get him there on the double. I don't like running him, especially when they're already tired, but I don't want him to stay any longer in the line of fire than necessary. Okay, shift. There you go. See, they no longer have the defensive terrain bonus, but they do have the support bonus. Why are you doing that? Okay, apparently this unit must not be hurting at all, because that just seems irresponsible to expose your flank. This is not looking... It doesn't look smart to me. You're exposing your flank to an enemy regiment, but it is a small enemy regiment. It's actually only listed as a battalion, so maybe... I don't know. Maybe the computer knows best. Um, 
We'll go ahead and advance this regiment on the left to support a bit. And we'll put this unit basically in reserve now, just in case that the unit that decided to go off on its own um, decides to get routed. Um, but anyway, where was I? Um, yeah, so the orders tab is going to be a lot more. See, even as a brigade commander, I can give um, more orders just to all out attack. It'll tell my regiments to just basically all out attack, attack, probe, which is kind of like feeling out, um, none, which is what I currently have it set to, where I'll just give the regimental commands, hold to the last, which basically means what it says, and then hold and defend. Um, so I can give, you know, a division uh, in order to hold a specific. Um, specific place on the field to try and obviously well do what it says hold a specific place on the field um, so I'm finally holding where I'm supposed to hold I don't know if I got there in time but we'll see how long I hold out um, anyway these are a lot more important when you get to the upper levels the other thing is you can do you can do dispatches received so this lists all the orders I've received which in this case is just the one um, dispatch a sent as anything I've sent off. Um, I can order a resupply. Oh, uh, that was dumb. That was really dumb. Okay, yeah, I so say I clearly just ordered my units to resupply, but they're in the middle of combat. Probably not a good idea. Um, yeah, so what that would do basically is order my men to await resupply and move back toward a resupply wagon if that was available, which we're not going to do. I don't know if that means the supply wagon will come to me. I don't see it anymore. So yeah, I guess that means that my men will just be stupid while they're in the middle of combat. I guess that was my only dumb order. Um, anyway, so I can attach a brigade or remove, or remove the brigade from command or regiments, so basically what that would mean is if I attach, or if I detach a regiment in this case, um, that regiment would no longer act when I give brigade commanders, it would kind of be like an independent regiment fighting on its own. You can do the same for brigades when you command more than a brigade. Um, take charge, obviously in this case I'm commanding that guy. Objectives uh, tells me my objective, it's a minor objective, I get 200 points every minute I hold it, I need to have at least 100 men there to hold it. I can compose a com courier message. So if I want to send a message um, regarding support, I can report my status. Um, actually, message recipient. So I'm going to send a, command, uh, a message to Brigadier General Doubleday. He's the guy who gave me my orders. Um, day. Yeah, I'll just do that for the current. I can do a free text, which is more useful when you're doing multiplayer, because you can actually type out a specific message to another member of your team, but the courier has to get there. If you get shot, your team member won't get the message. So it's just like a real battle. Um, and I can send him in... Well, I can send him a request to execute orders. Um, I can send him this message, so... Let's... Can we remove... Last, so Brigadier General Doubleway. Um, I'm driving. My unit is fighting hard and holding the enemy. Oh uh, no, I don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. My unit is driving the enemy and advancing in this fight and proceeding well. So I'm going to send. This is me, Patrick. I'm going to send a courier to the general. As you can see the courier is going to ride off. I don't know where Doubleday is, but he's a ways back. I think this is him right here. So I don't know if that'll prompt him to send orders to me. You can also request support. So if you know I'm about to be driven back, or if I'm doing poorly, I can request reinforcements. I honestly don't know how that works on these small scenarios, these 30-minute scenarios. These might be more scripted than the other ones. Um, they seem pretty genuine and realistic. Um, looks like the enemy has been driven. Man, there's a lot of dead bodies um, throughout the field. Um, but yeah. Looks like our, we're doing fine here to me. There could be some trouble coming from these regiments, but they don't. They're in the open. They don't. They'd have to attack through woods. This regiment isn't doing as well, but it's got good morale, and I can always bring this unit around and protect it if I need to. Um, but anyway, the courier reached double day by now. It looks like I don't see anything coming back from him, so I guess it did nothing. 
Um, but you can send couriers, you know, back and forth. Um, it's a really unique system. It's one of the things that really was making me praise this game. It's, just, it's so totally different from anything else out there that um, I really, really appreciate that. Um, and the amazing thing in multiplayer is that you can send messages to your teammates. There's also something called Team Talk. I've, I've not played online yet, but um, a lot of people who play this game use something called Team Talk, which I believe is where you basically talk to your, your, you know, your teammates on a microphone. So people who are used to kind of the Call of Duty type thing will recognize that. There are teams who play Courier only, and that's a lot more realistic. There's also a mod I mentioned previously called uh, Head in the Saddle which is basically where you are commanding an entire unit, kind of like this, kind of like you are the commander, and you can only follow the horse around and see what they see. So couriers and things like that are much more important to give out your orders. If you want, you can point and click and move everything around and command it, kind of like I am right here. But that's kind of more typical for a brigade fight anyway. But if you want, you can definitely point and click and, you know, move units around manually. Um... But, but I mean, the Couriers add just an entirely different element. It's, it's such a realistic game. I mentioned last time the United States Army is, is using the game um, as a training course for leaders. Um, so it's really something that's phenomenal, special, and, and unique in every kind of a way. Um, the scenario's got to be getting pretty close to done. I don't think I'm going to win the battle. I mean, obviously I've done well. The enemy's retreated, but I'm not going to get a decisive... What is my unit doing? What the hell? Why are you guys retreating? Ah, oh, fruit. Okay, well, I didn't see that coming. I'm still pretty well supported there. Uh, I ran out of time. So you're limited by time. I mean, it's kind of based around some historical things. That was an inconclusive fight. I needed 2,000 for a victory, so I was just shy of that. I needed another minute. Um, I needed 3,000 for a decisive victory, which is the only way to technically level up in the game. Um... It keeps track of your success in all the different battles. Um, in this case, gives you, you know, obviously it was an inclu inconclusive fight, so I didn't succeed in the battle. Um, you can fight any of the battles. I, winning or losing, honestly, doesn't really matter from the fighting perspective. But anyway, it was an inclu inconclusive fight, so I didn't win or I didn't lose. Um, gives you a little news write-up, as you see here, from the Harper's Weekly, which was a very famous newspaper at the time. Um... But yeah, that that's gonna conclude my video. Um, well, we'll go into one. We'll look at some of the post-battle stuff. So it gives you um, uh, a little summary of your unit. So uh, this was me, General Patrick. Um, it gives me my routed my 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 units. It gives me their status, their ammo, their score, which as we talked about early, gives me the status at the end of the battle. They lost two men killed, eleven wounded, two missing. That must have been the least um, least. Uh, engaged in my units, the one that was kind of sitting back most of the time. Um, but it inflicted 100 enemy casualties, then it gives me the units that they inflicted those on. Um, you can look at the top U.S. commander, which in this case was General McClellan, how the entire units did on the field that we saw anyway. Um, there was, uh, says 53,000 men. Now, obviously, there wasn't all of those units uh, engaged during this part of the battle. Um, it looks like Hooker's first corps was the main unit we saw there, Double Day, which was our division, um, and then it gives you all the different brigades, um, famous uh, Iron Brigade there, John Gibbons Black Hat Brigade, the scores for those units, so in this case there were really only three heavily involved units, the 4th uh, Brigade, 3rd Brigade, and the 1st Brigade, also gives you the artillery, I mean you get the same breakdown for all the units, and it goes for the Confederates too, you can view all that that information for the Confederates as well. So it gives you a lot of information. Allows you to dump the information, the game dump the game database to your desktop if you want information from that. If you close, you can go back to the battle, you can return to the battle. It won't change your result, but if you want to keep fighting, it gives you that option. Um, then obviously the exit the battle. So this was um this is going to conclude uh, my uh, videos on this battle. I may be looking at doing a longer battle with a little bit more commentary. Um, I'm not really sure how I felt about this commentary. It was a little bit more focused probably because I was doing a live commentary. Uh, well, not live, obviously. I'm not streaming this, but I was commenting while doing the fight rather than after the fact. But we'll see. Um, I'll be looking at some other games as well. I may come back to this game shortly or look at some of the Gettysburg scenarios since that's what the game was originally built around. 
Um, I actually would like to look at the Pipe Creek scenarios also, which was the hypothetical battle that was released, a small map pack. It was only $9. Um, for anyone interested in the game, you can check it out at um, scourgeofwar.com. Um, it is an excellent game. I spent the entire last video raving about it. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is a really great time to get into Civil War history. It is the 150th anniversary this year of the Battle of Antietam. So fitting time to release it, although they did release it at the end of 2011. Um, but yeah, just I, I can't say enough about this game and can't say enough positive about it. Um, I really do love it. Um, check the game out on the site. Um, they may have a demo, I'm not sure. Um, but it, it's definitely worth checking out. It's a very well-supported game. Like I said, the original game came out about a year and a half ago. But um, obviously they're still releasing new versions of it. Uh, Pipe Creek came out couple months back, Antietam just came out, it's still a very modern, still a very well supported game, they just came out with a new patch for it the other day, um, so yeah, check it out if you're interested in this type of thing, um, might seem a little slow for some people, but anyone interested in the Civil War should give this a look. Um, until next time, uh, this is the Historical Gamer, signing out.